everyone, welcome back to my channel. So my name is Amina and if you are new here then I'd absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel and stay notified for all my new videos. I'm quickly edging towards December which means that I'm going to be doing daily videos. Super duper excited for them and I cannot wait and I cannot wait for you guys to enjoy a video every single day. As you can tell I'm also in a new location so I'm currently filming in my office. I converted the spare bedroom into an office because we just we just don't have guests that stay overnight and actually no point in having a room that's dedicated to one bed that's always empty. I've got a new desk and everything, a whole new setup and I'm super excited to be able to use this room as an office and to study here, to film here and hopefully to do lots more videos for you guys here. So I am going to do an office tour I think. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you want to see this tour of this room and what I've done to it because there are like different corners of the room and right now I'm in like one of the corners and this is my kind of area. Area and my desk and my husband's desk is here like in this bit um, but yeah let me know if you want to see it and I'll definitely do that for you. So today I want to talk about how to write a good essay. Now I don't know about you guys but when I first started university and I was given my first essay that was really to be honest my first scientific lengthy piece of work that I had to write and I didn't do very well in it and I didn't understand why because I thought that I had included research papers and I thought that I had being coherent and academically fluent and I really thought I did well and I was quite disappointed but as time went and as I became more experienced in writing essays and you know I progressed through my masters and my PhD I, I completely understand now why I didn't do as well as I thought I had done at the time and a lot of it comes down to understanding what the mark scheme wants and being able to convert the mark scheme and what it's asking for into an essay and being able to take what you've read and the academic reading and journals that you've looked at and to be able to translate that into an academic piece of writing. So what I have done today is I've looked at a few essays and a few dissertations that I have written throughout my third year of university, my masters and also my PhD thesis. I've identified some regions where I have been very academically fluent, I have been very scientifically fluent as well. In this essay I'm going to focus on just a 2-1 and a 1st which is equivalent to 60 to 70 percent for a 2-1 or 70 percent and above 100 percent for a first. So those are both very good grades to be able to achieve. And it's all well and great to try to aim for a 2-1 or for a first, but if your essay doesn't display the characteristics and the requirements for the grades below it, then you wouldn't even be able to get a 2-1. So I'm going to quickly go through a few of the points that you need to make sure that your essay displays before you can even think about a 2-1 or a first. The first thing is that your essay needs to be within the word limit. Now this, I shouldn't need to say this, but you do need to make sure that your essay is plus or minus 10% um, of the word limit. So if your word limit is 5,000, let's say, it should be between 4,500 and 5,500. It shouldn't be any more, any less. You can quickly and easily find that out by looking at Word or whatever processing um, software you're using to write your essay. Just make sure that when you submit your essay, the word limit is respected. The second one is that you have to have fluency in your English language, which means your writing should be clear, should be legible, it should have no spelling mistakes, no punctuation mistakes or grammar mistakes, your sentence structure should be clear, and those are all things that you should have in an essay before you even think about getting a 2-1 or a 1st. If you are struggling with the English language, you could use Grammarly, which is a writing assistant, and it helps you with your punctuation, your speller and your grap... your speller? which helps you with your spelling, your grammar and also your punctuation, so that could be a great tool. If you also have the money to spare, you could just send your work to a proofreader and ask them to proofread it and that could be a possibility too. So you need to be able to reference, which means you draw from the work of others. So you can either reference a book, you can reference a journal, a research paper, a review paper, you can reference something that someone said, you can reference a website, but just drawing on, on the work of others. So taking someone else's work and saying, look, this is what I've read or heard or seen, and this is how I'm interpreting it, or this is how it's relevant to my work, is really, really, really important. So referencing throughout is key, and it's definitely something that you have to do even to pass an essay. The last two points I'm going to mention are feeding into the 2, 1 and 1st category. The first one is that you need to be aware of limitations. So you need to mention limitations of the research or limitations of the theories or whatever topic it is that you're talking about. You need to be aware of some limitations. Now I'm going to go into more detail in the next part because it's more relevant for a 1st and a 2, 1. And secondly, your essay should not be purely descriptive. 
I think it's quite a big jump going from high school to university. Um, the jump is that your essays become more critical and less descriptive. So you definitely have to be showing some critical understanding or some critical writing in your essays, even just for the 40 to 60 percent. Uh, grade boundary. Now I'm going to move on to the 60 to 69 percent grade boundary which is classified as a 2-1. So the first thing is that your sources need to be creative and you need to have a wide range of information. So you need to not only feed off of journals or find information from websites but you need to be acquiring your information from a range of different sources. The second thing is that your sources and your references need to be cited completely and accurately. So before in the 46 category you had to reference to some extent but in the 60 to 69 category you do need to make sure that your references are Harvard style referencing unless stated otherwise so they must be precise. You must have the name of the journal, the name of the title, the author names, the page numbers, the issue number and everything else that's required. I am going to be releasing a video on how to reference Harvard style properly um, probably next week so do look out for that. The next thing is that your reading does have to be selective and it does have to be up to date. I think we can get very caught up in a textbook style of reading that we are used to from high school and from college and sixth form but no your reading does have to be up to date it does need to be very relevant especially in for example the sciences field where things are moving very quickly it doesn't make sense for you to write about something from 10 years ago that has been proved to be inaccurate or that has been disproved since. So it's really important that you try to find the most recent and up-to-date literature to reference in your essays. You also need to be very critical in your essay. I will show you an example of what I mean by being critical. So that means showing that you have thought about the limitations to the experiments or the theory, even discussing other people's work and how they juxtapose each other or how they oppose each other. Trying to go into more critical depth and criticising things um, as opposed to just being just purely recalling information and saying, right, this person did this and that person did that. What's the difference? Why, why are their theories different? What limitations are there to this experiment? Is the N number really small? They've only used five cells. Is that too small to be able to make such a big judgment? Or they used a um, dose that's too high for clinical trials. So really it's something that we can't really take and look at. You know, what, what is it? What is the reason why this research is critical? You basically need to criticise it. You need to, without being negative, you need to say what's wrong with that work or what could be changed or the things that could have led to the result. So in your essay, you have to display a bit of an academic argument. Bounce off of your own point. You could say, this author showed this, but then this author showed this. This author disproved this one because so and so. And kind of build on your answers as opposed to just simply giving blanket statements without critically analysing them. It shows that your depth of understanding is quite strong. In order to achieve a 2-1, you need to show authority in your own work. Okay, so in order to achieve a first, the things that you need to be looking out for are the following. So building on your critical awareness from a 2-1, you do need to interrogate everything that you say. You need to interrogate the theory, to interrogate the research that you're talking about and that you might be basing your research on. You do need to be extremely critical. But this really depends on what topic that you are writing about because obviously it varies a lot from the humanities to the sciences to the arts. But you do really need to be extremely critical. You need to show wealth in your critical ability. You need to show that you are able to take a piece of writing, read it, form your own conceptual theories, form your own arguments, and show the limitations, and understand how this paper or this work could be improved on, the limitations to it, because no work is perfect. There is no research paper that, that's out there, peer-reviewed or not that is absolutely perfect. There will always be limitations to any work that you will ever read or even that you will ever produce. Your material that you write about needs to be from an extremely wide range of sources. Now, this cannot include anything that your lecturer has recommended. Those papers are not enough for you to get a first. You need to show that you've done wider reading. So you can do a Google search, Google Scholar search, you can go into Scopus, you can go into PubMed, 
you can go into Science Direct and finding papers that are appropriate. It's not just about finding papers that look like they have the correct title or sound good. You need to find papers that are going to justify what your argument is, that are going to support your writing. Nothing impresses your examiner or your lecturer or your professor more than knowing that someone is passionate about their subject. Don't forget that that lecturer, that professor has dedicated their life to research, to be an academic, to be a lecturer, to study that topic in so much depth. So for them to be able to read an essay that is different to the rest of the, the class's essays looks really good and it feels good for that examiner as well. Another point that you need to be doing is independent discussion. So you need to be coming up with your own conclusions. You need to be thinking of things that you think could be appropriate to conclude from the work that you've read. There is no right or wrong answer. Independent judgment, independent conclusions that you haven't just peeled from a paper. Rather, you've taken the information from different papers, put them together and said to yourself, actually, you know what, I think that this, the research that's out there, then what I've read so far shows that this is the situation. This is the case, this is my theory, this is my conclusion. By showing that you are thinking like someone who is doing the research, it's a very, it, it's, I wouldn't say it's challenging, but it is a skill that you do have to build upon and you do have to learn through reading. It also shows your comprehensive knowledge of the subject. To be able to come up with your own theories, your own understanding, your own conclusion, you are showing that your knowledge is comprehensive and your knowledge is fluent. And I think to be able to aim for a first at university level, that is what you should be aiming for. Lastly, you do have to make original connections. To be able to aim for like the top end of a first, so maybe like an 80 to 90%, which I've rarely seen. I think the highest I ever got was like an 80. But to aim for like the 90%, you need to be making original connections. So connections between papers, between articles, between theories that has not been made before. And that is very difficult, which is why you would rarely see someone get 90 or even 80% at university. It's very rare to get that high. Generally, you should stick to third person in your essays, but in the conclusion and also in the introduction, it is totally okay to write one or two sentences in first person. It does show original thoughts and it does show that your essay is personalised and kind of, it is your thought essentially. Let me quickly show you how I interpreted that and how I was able to get a first and a distinction in my essays. So this bit is the literature review of my dissertation and I'm discussing the papers that I've read about um, the mitochondria, how mitochondrial toxicity can occur through the use of some cancer curing drugs. Because I've given a statement of what was observed in a particular research paper. So I said that apoptosis and necrosis were observed, which means death of the mitochondria, and also morphological changes, which is changes in the way that the mitochondria looks, such as aggregation and remodeling of the structure. So I've said that that is what this paper has seen when they did some experiments. And then what I did was I said, well, actually, other studies did not harmonize um, actually, that cardiac necrosis in rats occurred at only non-clinically uh, relevant doses. So, essentially what's, what it's saying is, yes, this drug did cause cell death, but you have to note that other studies did not find it because that paper used doses that were way too high and obviously that's going to cause death. That's a, a, a limitation of the paper that I mentioned above. And I've also been able to explain why it's a limitation. If I had just said other studies did not harmonize and just gave the study, that doesn't show why. So this bit here would be straight away in the two one in the first, straight away. And I'll summarize this bit by saying, well, even though that was the case, the literature, by evaluating it, which means other papers, loads of other papers, shows that it's quite strongly, um, it quite strongly goes with what I've said in yellow. So the green is one paper or two papers, whereas the yellow is the popular vote, and that is what essentially mostly occurs in research. And then if you go down again here, again, I kind of do it again here. So I'm talking about the mitochondria here, and then at the end, I say that Further clarification is required, so I have said that this is what research 
we've done. So although the impairment has been showed, it is not consistent in all studies. It would lead me really nicely to be able to talk about the other papers and criticise them. I hope that was helpful in being able to identify the parts of an essay that you do need to really focus on in order to aim for a 2-1 and a 1st. I'm not saying that this is an overnight thing that you can just apply to your essay. It does take time, it does take a lot of reading to be able to make such conclusions and to be able to discuss limitations of the literature. You do need to know a wide scope of papers. When you finish writing an essay, go back to the front and highlight all the points where you have critically discussed your topic. So just highlight it, any limitations, any critical discussion or any original thought or debate. I would highlight that and there should be I, there should be at least a quarter of your essay or even a fifth of your essay should have should be highlighted and if it isn't you definitely do need to go back and think about ways that you can change the way that you're saying things and how you can modify it in order to add that critical analysis it's not easy it has taken me up to my masters to be able to master it um, but it definitely is a requirement to be able to aim for a first or a two one which I'm sure you guys can all easily easily manage. I do have a proofreading service or an essay help service where I can help and support you write your essays so do let me know send me an email and I can drop you the prices. Email me on my email which I'll leave over here and it's also in the link down below and I will hopefully be able to help you with improving your essays and improving your dissertation. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed and don't forget to press the subscribe button to be notified for my next video which will be on December the 1st on Saturday super excited uh, which is only three days from now so I'm really really excited for that don't forget to follow me on my socials which would be up here and I'll see you guys in my next one bye